How many have heard that raging hormones is the cause of adolescent changes? Yeah, okay. So this is, a, this is absolutely a myth. Um, first of all, you know, I'm, I'm a physician and I've studied endocrinology. We don't have a category of hormones that have anger management problems <laughs> that are raging. Now they are rising, that's true. In puberty, you have the, the development of the ovaries and the testicles. So you have the secondary sexual characteristics that are being caused with the development of the body and all sorts of different sexual feelings and feelings you get with puberty for sure. You even have changes in the reward circuits of the brain. All sorts of things happen with rising hormones, but I don't even know what a raging hormone would be. Now, why is that myth a problem? Raging hormones are going to drive you mad and crazy. And it's, dismissive. it's completely dismissive, exactly. It's insulting and it's also disempowering. What do we mean by disempowering? If I told you you have raging hormones, what would you do about it? You'd like go to a lab and have your blood filtered and say, take out the raging ones and leave in the good ones. Like, what would you do about raging hormones? It's dismissive. It's absolutely insulting and it's completely wrong. Now, are hormones rising and the hormones that affect the brain and the way you feel and all that stuff? Absolutely, of course that's true. But to say they're raging disempowers you. So it's not a period of immaturity, it's not raging hormones, not we have to reject all adults. And yet this is what you hear. And if you're told it, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Now another reason this whole business is so important is because for any of us who have a knowledge of a lot of adolescence, how are adolescence, which is defined really as this period between childhood and, and um, adulthood, how are they doing in middle school and high school? Have you looked at the surveys recently? They're totally disengaged, in this country at least. They're not being engaged academically. They feel very demoralized. They don't feel like they want to pay attention. And when I talk to middle school and high school teachers about it, I say, well, what do you think is going on? And we try to match what the school offers with actually what the essence of adolescence is that we're going to review today. And there's like a mismatch. And yet we shove them through, and as you'll see, the very structure of school is antithetical to what the essence of adolescence is about. And then we wonder why they're not interested, or what do people say about adolescence? We say, oh, they're apathetic, they can't pay attention, they don't care, they're selfish. All those things, I want to suggest to you, are impressions that are outcomes of a mismatch between what we're told adolescence is and how we've created the world for them, that is their school. So this is not a talk just about uh, you know, the science of adolescence. It's actually a, a call to action for all of you, all of us, to actually really think about changing the cultural conversation about adolescence. And I think, as you'll see, the reason this has become so timely is because we desperately need adolescence. You know, if you look at these four things, novelty, seeking social engagement, increased emotional intensity, creative exploration, we're going to go through the brain next and see how those things happen and why they happen. But the fact is, every major innovation, for the most part, in not only art and music, but in science and technology, come from adolescent minds. They are built genetically to push against the status quo. And there's no time like the present on this planet that we need a whole group of individuals working to solve our world's problems in innovative ways where they push against the status quo that they've been handed to by the adults who basically destroyed the planet. And if we don't harness the innovation, the courage and creativity of adolescents, I don't think there's going to be much hope for our future as a species. So it isn't just let's make the adolescent their life better, which will be great to do that, but it's going to be a win-win thing because not only will we do that, but if we do this right, we're going to really tap into an incredible interest in other people, an incredible interest in doing something that's meaningful, that has purpose behind it, instead of just studying for a better GPA and a better SAT score. And what do we pressure them to do, by the way? Get all into the most competitive college so you can get into the most competitive graveyard, you know? <laughs> and that, that's all they feel. Yet, in fact, 
adolescents, adolescents are designed to be collaborative. Millions of years of history have gone into the idea and the experience and the reality that as an adolescent, if you don't collaborate with your adolescent peers, you're dead. Yet what do we do with them in school? For the most part, we say, beat out your neighbor. It is absurd. It is bio-illogical what we do to adolescents.